What's going on, Colts Nation? I appreciate you joining me for another video today. We're going to talk about free agency with it right around the corner. There are guys already visiting places. Johnny Smith has visited the Dolphins. They are in contract negotiations. No telling if you know they'll come to an agreement, but there are guys that are already starting to talk to teams. So with that in mind, I'd like to talk about some other guys that we haven't talked about. The Colts might pick up in free agency. And right here, we're going to talk about Marquise Brown. Wide receiver, originally with the Ravens, got traded to the Cardinals. Somebody that I think could be an impact player for the Colts in a certain role, right? With Michael Pittman Jr. coming back, you start thinking about how that would look, right? Before we even get into it all, think about Michael Pittman Jr. And then Marquise Brown as number two, Josh Downs as the number three or slot guy. Maybe Josh Downs would be the number two. You know what I mean? Second best receiver on the team. But in terms of inside, outside, Marquise Brown on the outside, taking that other outside position. And then you have Alec Pierce as a depth piece. Ashton Doolin is a depth piece. Anybody you draft could be a depth piece or they're all competing and all splitting reps, however it may go. But when you look at Marquise Brown, it's such an interesting topic to talk about. He's such a polarizing player for multiple reasons, right? Antonio Brown is his cousin. So there's that link that he has. But just in the NFL, there were such high expectations because he is Antonio Brown's cousin and people had unrealistic expectations. Like he's just going to come in and turn into Antonio Brown. But what he's done, it hasn't been terrible. Okay, like I thought Marquise Brown would, would be better in the NFL and he just never really lived up to it. But when you look at year by year and you start with his rookie year with the Ravens in 2019, he had 46 catches for 584 yards and seven touchdowns. So not terrible numbers for a rookie. Okay, and then you look at his second year where he follows it up in that 2020 season, everything goes up. He has 58 catches, 769 yards, in eight touchdowns. So through his first two seasons, doing really well. 15 total touchdowns over those first two seasons. Really good for any receiver coming into the NFL. So when you look at it, even though he's not getting the ball a crazy amount of times, he's able to score those touchdowns. That's one thing I like about him, that explosive ability that he has. Right now, when you look at it, as we continue to look forward here real quick, his best season was 2021, 91 catches, 1,008 yards, and six touchdowns. Then he gets traded, and when he's with the Cardinals, he has 67 catches, 709 yards, three touchdowns in his first season, which are good numbers, right? Had Kyler Murray for most of the season in 2023, didn't have Kyler Murray for most of the season, had 51 catches, 574 yards, and four touchdowns. And this is a guy, Marquise Brown, feels to me like a, kind of a guy like Brandon Cooks, a guy that always had that potential but didn't really have the best situation, wasn't in the best situations, and wasn't really able to be utilized the way he could have, right? Now, obviously, Brandon Cooks was with Sean Payton and, and Drew Brees for part of his career, and that's probably definitely part of why Brandon Cooks has become Brandon Cooks. But what I really mean is like Marquise Brown – has had enough time in the league and has been in a couple different systems, right? Been through some turmoil. Again, a lot of expectations for him. And he hasn't really lived up to what people thought he should have. So this is a guy that's battled through, has gotten to the point where he's gotten to, and a guy that's probably going to want to take a one-year deal somewhere. But I think he's a guy that is going to be fairly cheap compared to what big-time receivers are making. So a guy like Marquise Brown – this is why I think it makes sense for the Colts because, again, the explosive nature of Marquise Brown's game, but you look at his career average in terms of yard per reception, it's actually only at 11.6, which is just barely higher than Michael Pittman Jr. And I thought as I was going through looking at these numbers, I thought that that was just really interesting that that's the way it was, which means he's doing everything, right? And he does, he does a lot of different things, and he's able to operate – closer to the line of scrimmage while, you know, doing all those things, he's baiting so that at some point he can hit that deep ball. Okay, you now over the last few years, hasn't scored as many touchdowns as those first few years in the league, right? Over the last three seasons, he has 13 total receiving touchdowns, whereas in his first two seasons, he had 15 total receiving touchdowns. So a little bit of a downtick in that regard, whereas he's getting the ball more now. But – Marquise Brown is still a constant threat to a defense. And you think what he could do 
in the Shane Steichen offense. I think him and Josh Downs would be guys that could kind of intertwine and kind of intersect, and they could throw in different motions in the offense because both of these guys, Marquise Brown, Josh Downs, can both operate either outside or inside, and I think that's something they can do creatively in the offense. I think Marquise Brown can do everything. I think Josh Downs can do everything. So with his explosive nature and with what he's going to cost, I don't think he's going to cost very much. Like you think, for me, I think a guy like Alan Lazard kind of messes up the numbers a little bit. A guy that was able to sign a contract for, I believe it was four years, $44 million. I know for a fact he's making $11 million a year. So something like that kind of offsets it because it's like Marquise Brown should definitely get paid more than than what Alan Lazard does. But when we're talking about availability and we're talking about the kind of production that you're going to get from him, is he actually going to go over that number, right? Look at what I believe the Colts gave um, Isaiah McKenzie a one-year $3.5 million contract, I believe is what it was, worth up to $3.5 million. And so if Marquise Brown comes in, Marquise Brown will for sure be worth more. Okay, so I think Marquise Brown, if we can somehow get him for a contract somewhere between like eight and ten million dollars, right? Like one year, eight point five million dollars, or one year, nine point five million dollars. I think that'd be a good number, a nice proven deal for Marquise Brown comes into an explosive offense, a situation where if Anthony Richardson stays healthy, the Colts have a chance to win each and every week because he's so good. Michael Pittman Jr. coming back will take some of the pressure off Marquise Brown and help open him up, which is what I don't think Marquise Brown has ever really had in his career is that other guy on the other side of him to really open things up for him. And not only is Michael Pittman Jr. there to take something off of Marquise Brown with Josh Downs, so you add Marquise Brown into what we already have with Jonathan Taylor and and Anthony Richardson, in my opinion, again, it would be worth it if you can get him for a contract up to $10 million. If you have to pay him more than that, I think it gets sketchy with the other things that we need to do in free agency, other guys that I think we should sign, other positions we might need to go after, things that we could do. Maybe it gets a little sketchy. You have to rework some contracts, right? Can you rework Ryan Kelly's contract or Quentin Nelson's contract? These guys making big money. Braden Smith, rework his contract or trade them like we've talked about in the past. Can you do something to free up space to add a veteran player that you know what you're going to get with them and then still add a guy in the draft? Is that an avenue the Colts would want to go? I don't know. But this is a guy that I think the Colts should kick the tires on. I'd like to know your opinion. Do you think the Colts should get Marquise Brown? If so, and if he is a guy that you would at least be interested in seeing on the Colts, what would be the number for you? Okay, top flight guys, the best receivers in the game are making $30 million a year. Michael Pittman Jr. on the franchise tag is going to be making just north of $20.7 million a year. So what do you think Marquise Brown should get if he came to the Colts? You let me know all that down in the comments section. I'd love to know what your thoughts are. Don't forget to subscribe with notifications on as we're going to continue talking about free agency. We're going to have draft talk. So make sure you're subscribed and have notifications on so you get notified for all of that when it comes out. Of course, I appreciate you stopping by for another video. And as always, take care of yourself, take care of each other, and go Colts.